Hi and welcome to this review of Cubase 9. Uh, so you know where we are with this, we are just going to be taking a look at the new features of Cubase 9 and an overall review of it. I've been using it for a few weeks now. Uh, for more detail on some of the things such as sampler tracks etc uh, then there are other videos on the channel which I will link to in the description. But this is just to give you a quick idea of what's new in Cubase 9, what I like, what I don't like etc. So first things first, let's load up a project. So this obviously is the Cubase 8 demo project. And you will probably see one of the first changes straight away as soon as it loads. And that is the window management. So as we can see here now, the project window has taken on a bit of a new look. So we've got the VST instruments area at the right, which is now known as the right zone. Uh, we've got the left zone where the inspector was, and we've got something pretty pretty much new. Uh, other than when you've used core pads, which is the lower zone. So let's look at these in turn. Firstly, the lower zone here, we've got four different options. So we've got the mix console, so you can have uh, the mixer in there uh, in three different views. So you can look at faders or you can look at inserts and sends. Uh, and it's zoomable in and out, much like your standard mixer. Um, we've got an editor. So depending on the kind of track you're looking at, so in this case, if we look at MIDI, we've got MIDI in there. And if we look at some audio uh, on these tracks, we would have audio in there and so on. Um, again, nothing particularly revolutionary, but if you are using this on a, a laptop or a single screen computer, etc., this can be really useful because one of the things that's been difficult for quite a long time with Cubase has been uh, window management. But don't fear if you're concerned about this you've still got the original editor. So we've still got access to those original editors. Um, and same for MIDI here. So we've got exactly the same kind of functionality as you had before. So if you're used to that, and particularly if you find the real estate here isn't enough for what you're doing, you can still open it up in the full editor and you can switch between the two. So you can go from here to there, etc. That's really useful. Um, the other two things we have in here is we've got chord pads. So chord pads, are really useful and they've been around for a while. Uh, they now have sort of a proper home. So they've they've really the thing that brought this to Cubase. Now they appear there along with the other three things that can be there. And the last one, which we're gonna look at in a bit, is sampler tracks. So we're gonna look at sampler tracks in a bit. Uh, we'll just finish this overview of the project window. So next thing you'll notice on the right is that the, previously this was known as the racks area and it was about this wide it was a real pain because it just took up too much space but now it's fortunately resizable um, so if you want to access that which I think is more likely when it's small uh, you can do the other thing they've done is sensibly introduced two really easy keyboard shortcuts to allow you to hide and show these windows so it's control out R for the right and control out E for the bottom zone which while that doesn't make that much sense uh, it does make a lot of sense in terms of its position because I can just do that with one hand while I'm here. Uh, the one for the left zone, which is where the inspector is now uh, known as, uh, is control out L. But I don't think you're going to be turning it off anywhere near as much because it's so useful uh, when you've got an editor open, etc. Uh, you can change the preference as to whether or not it opens in the lower zone or opens in an editor as well. So you don't need to be uh, too concerned about that. But we can switch between track and editor modes, etc. There. You may also have noticed that we have a transport at the bottom now. So you still have access to the original floaty transport bar. Um, this is one of those changes where first time I saw it, I was like, oh, really? And yeah, I've been using it almost constantly since I've hardly missed the, the full transport bar, as it were. Um, nearly all the features you want are here. So your record modes, etc., cetera, um, tempo changes, locators, punch in and out, etc. cetera. Um, and it, it just sits there unobtrusively and does does you know what you want. So obviously you can have this. You can hide this as well. You've got a window set up here where you could turn that on and off, etc. But I've I've found that I've just been using it nearly all the time in everything I've been doing. So that's a quick view of what's changed in the project window. Now next we're going to take a look at pro what probably most people will think is the killer app as it were for Cubase 9 and that is sampler tracks okay so with a sampler track um, it's a simple straightforward sampler which has a few nice uh, tricks up its sleeve uh, you can drag any audio 
you want onto this. So if we were just to import some audio, we can just drag it onto here, etc. We can load up a file here or go for a preset. The, the really nice thing about this is if you've got audio in your project window already, you can just drag it onto a sample track. So if you want to start manipulating something you're already using, you can you can do that really quickly. So workflow wise, this works really well. Uh, I'm just going to quickly load up any old sample except that one. Um, so just some straightforward, simple samples here. So let's just load up one of these loops and we can see straight away you've just got instant sampling available to you here. So you can pick your key zone, you can change your amp settings and you've got a envelope here, pitch, filter, etc. We'll look at this all in more detail in a separate video because I want to keep this fairly concise. But you can also put it in a separate window as you'd imagine. So that's it. You can have lots of floaty windows, etc. Um, there's lots you can do with this, so we'll cover this in a separate video, but samplers, sampler tracks are something that have been asked for for a long time, and I think they've really delivered on this. It's not perfect, but uh, nothing ever is, is it? But there's, there's plenty of interesting things to be seen in there. Next thing is something which I think um, quite a few people have been asking for for a long time. Certainly I've been asking for a long time and all the things I've seen on forum, which is history for the mix console. So this is one of those things which is just a one-line addition as far as uh, a list of features is concerned, but it's absolutely incredibly important because it now means that if you make a change on any of these controls here and controls in VST instruments and settings, etc., it will be reflected in the history. So if I grab this fader, move it down, uh, if it wasn't being automated, etc., which I think nearly all of them probably are in this track, um, it would be reflected there so we can see there we go we've got that I can do whatever I've done and we can just step back through that just like you would any other history uh, and you will be in business so it's a really useful um, feature which people have been asking for forever say so it takes a minute to explain but it really will transform what you can do because just like having undo in any other area it means you can experiment and you can go back without having to worry about saving and this that and the other and if you do make a mistake go oh no what did i just set that to or from you're straight there so that's really useful um another thing which is gonna it, again it's only a very short thing but it's the kind of thing people go oh that's what i've been waiting for i've i've done this now i'm going to turn on my MIDI keyboard, which wasn't turned on initially, and anyone who's been using this on Windows will know, normally you have to quit Cubase, turn your device on, and then restart Cubase to get it to work. Now, it just works on plug and play, so as soon as you get it up and running, so as soon as it's turned on, you'll be in business. So that's I'm playing that on a keyboard, which wasn't turned on when I started doing this recording, so that's a really, really big thing, even though it's just one line and a, and a, you know, a changes list. Another thing, which is a really big change, which again, on the face of it, just seems like a small thing, but anyone who, who's been doing this for a while will know this is a massive thing, is that Cubase is now 64-bit only. Yeah, I'll let that sink in for a bit. So if you've not been prepared for this, this is going to be a bit of a shock because you'll probably find that a lot of the plugins you use, particularly if you use some older free plugins and so on, and you've not been updating them recently, will be 32-bit. So you, you really have the choice of either using something like JBridge to bridge them uh, to a 64-bit app or abandoning them or finding alternatives. Now, in the case of some plugins, such as for me, certainly Short Circuit is irreplaceable and is 32-bit only, so I will be uh, bridging that at the moment, but there will be quite a few things uh, you may need to work on some plugins just don't bridge but there's quite a lot which have been updated you know even crazy things like crystal are now available in 64 bit so you'll probably spend a fair bit of time searching but i think it will pay off in the long run because we were only ever going to go to 64 bit eventually and now is the time if you're using cubase so from nine on it's 64 bit only uh, other things which have changed, so we have now have multiple marker tracks. So if you're a fan of using marker tracks, as I have been, particularly when doing things for picture, etc., it can be really useful to have them. But having multiple marker tracks is even more useful because you can change edits, etc. 
So now we can add multiple marker tracks and once you've got them in there you can just pick which one is currently active just like that. Again, only a small change but if you make a lot of use of these things that's going to be really important for you. Uh, kind of linked to that as well, you can now use cycle markers to do your export ranges. So if you're doing a lot of uh, exporting of different parts, uh, stems, etc. for people or if you're doing uh, exporting lots and lots of individual ranges of things to be possibly imported into uh, software etc for gaming and so on then you can use uh, the cycle markers to set up those loop ranges which again will probably vastly speed your workflow and save you having to do stuff that takes you ages at the moment. Uh, other than that included with this we've got some new content which let's look at that on a new project so we've got two new sort of sample and MIDI etc packs which have come with uh, Cubase 9 so we've got Kaleidoscope which has got quite a few uh, interesting things and actually makes quite a lot of use of the sampler track so we've got things in here which will be fully playable etc and because they're sampler tracks they load up reasonably quickly so yeah sounding a bit old school and there and as ever with these if you double click them you get an appropriate track Put into your project window but not only that we've also got the uh, production grooves and there's loads and loads of uh, midi loops etc and appropriate settings for groove agent which have been put into here takes a little longer for them to turn up but you get you get the idea with those and again here they are and obviously the great advantage of these is they are fully editable and you can learn quite a lot from the quality of the programming of these so the kind of things which uh, I spend most of my time trying to teach people to do have been done here so look at the you know there's a little bit of groove and and slackness in these and variation in the uh, velocities etc so that's one of the reasons why these sound uh, good because they've been uh, well programmed so that's pretty much it now I'm sure there will be a load of people going, oh, well, it's not really that much of a change. You know, it's not a, a, a 1.x version change, you know, from 8 or 8.5 to 9. But I think sampler tracks are really important. And the workflow changes, I found, strangely, I found that the single window interface actually works really well. I've been doing quite a bit of work on my laptop. Uh, I've also been uh, using this in the studio on, on a two-screen setup, and it definitely does work better. Um, I'm sure it won't suit everybody, but every nearly every app is going towards a non-floating window setup, and I think ultimately that's looking like where Cubase will go eventually, although it will be interesting to see how they deal with the fact that obviously you've not got much screen space uh, down here for really in-depth editing and opening it up in the full editor on something where you're not on a drum track where it's fairly limited, which is probably going to be... Um, more useful long term uh, and also it's a bit slightly strange going between here and here because the inspector stays there whereas obviously on the editor the inspector is kind of at a more normal level but overall I think the changes here have been really really positive um, there are a few bits and pieces that don't quite work properly uh, there's some issues occasionally with the window not appearing um, there's a couple of bugs here and there but from what I've seen they're all already being fixed and will be you know updated fairly quickly and it looks like uh, things are going to move forward on that front so whether or not you think Cubase 9 is is worth it for you is obviously something for you to judge on but really these are the main uh, features that are in here um, one last thing is that some instruments at, at the moment only Retrolog, but third-party instruments will do it as well, have the ability to uh, sidechain uh, input audio. So in the case of Retrolog, you can use this. So then you can use Retrolog's um, amp, filter, envelopes, etc. to control the audio you pass through it, which, again, I think that's the kind of thing that in with third-party stuff that will be really interesting. Certainly I've had a few interesting um, experiments with, with Retrolog, but I think it's the kind of thing that people will really hopefully hit the ground and run with and be able to do some really interesting stuff. It will open up um, more possibilities for interesting processing and 
filter synth combinations etc uh, but really it's it's the kind of thing i guess you're, you're going to decide whether it's up to you for those extra features but i would certainly consider uh if you can get a demo when they come around to doing that if you're not sold on it straight away i would i would give it a go because just the window uh management in the same way uh when cubase 8 improved the window management and things started getting a little less haphazard um nine has has taken that a whole load forward and and really move forward and sampler tracks have got some really interesting stuff which will be uh in the video um but obviously we know that this is how this software is going to be so you know they'll be on a two-year release cycle almost like clockwork so we know that 9.5 will come in around a year and then cubase 10 will be in two years time and while it's not a subscription model because obviously you can buy the software and you can never upgrade it i know some people who are still using very early versions of cubase sx um uh, one guy held out on cubase vst for years and years and years and if if it does everything you want then then there's no need to upgrade and you're not being forced to do so but if you want to keep up with all the current things and get all the new content and facilities then clearly that's the way you have to go but hopefully I've shown you the features that are available and say if you look in the other videos we're going to look in a bit more depth so we're going to look at sampler tracks um, and a bit more on the included uh, media as well as some new hit tips and tricks that I found as well during the course of exploring Cubase 9 over the past few weeks. If you've enjoyed these videos and found them useful, then subscribe by clicking on the MT2 logo in the bottom of the screen now. Also, visit musictechtuition.com for tips, tricks and advice, as well as information about the books I've written, The Complete Guide to Music Technology Using Cubase 9, and Music Tech A-Level Using Cubase 9. These are a great resource, whether you're just getting started or you've been working for a few years now. The information in them will allow you to take your sequencing, recording and production to the next level and give you a well-rounded grounding in all areas of music technology.